Now what we do is we open up Dynamic Game Trainer, go to Create Address Sheet, and now let's first have a name for this. Now this is our money, so just type in money, and then we have a mojo. Okay, now how do you find out the mojo? Well, that's great that it didn't do that. Okay, uh, so you find out the mojo. You go right here, double click this address tab where the address is and then you have this okay bioshock infinite.exe and then plus blah bioshock infinite.exe that stuff that's in quotation marks is the module so use that and the stuff that's behind the quotation mark with the plus that's actually the base address we have just type in 0x to um, basically say that this is a hexadecimal <coughs> And now we have to add our offsets. Okay, now these are all the offsets we have. And basically, do it like this. We just copy this one and then we go from there. So do 0x and then 38, 3a8, comma. And you have to separate this by comma. Don't use a point or anything like this. Separate each offset with a comma. That's very important. Because otherwise it's not going to be recognized as an array. And then the program, I don't know if it's going to crash. I don't think so. But it's not going to be good. Either since you won't have the right offsets that you actually fan out. Uh, oh, make make sure you put a 0x in front of every offset. So 0x and then 1a4. And actually, I like to you know have these uppercase letters because it, I think it just looks better. I don't know. It just it's more familiar because hex it's actually just these uppercase letters. So it's not actually lowercase ones. You you will see that once we use the calculator as well. 0x50c. And now what we do is first we have to change the value type. Now to get the value type we take this and it says here the type is 4 bytes. Now 4 bytes is an integer so we just change it to inter integer 32. Go to add address. Now we can simply export this address sheet. Now if you actually mess this up or anything or if you just want to edit this then you can just go to edit address and then you can apply the changes and you know. But we're going to go to file, export and then we'll call this, okay I already have one Bioshock one, so we call this just infinite, that's a good idea, .cds, just save it and it says the specified addresses have been exported to blah, and then you're done, okay, so we can close this, um, no, what, mm, I've already exported it, okay, I just found a bug, as I said this is the developer preview version, it's nice that I found this bug, Okay, now what you do is you basically have this process name and we're going to see if it works. So Bioshock Infinite is the process name. Now how do you find this out? Well, it's pretty easy. You just open up the task manager. Okay, go to details and then you will find Bioshock Infinite. Now forget the extension, okay? Don't put the extension there, just put Bioshock Infinite without the .exe. And whatever game you have, this is the one that's running, so just, you know, type that in. Um, so just Bioshock Infinite. Now go to load addresses and it says do you want to automatically generate value fields for every memory address. We just have one so yes we're gonna do that so we don't have you can also manually create these value fields up there but this is a system it's currently in place but I'm not really too happy with this so I'm probably going to change this in the future as well so just click open and as you can see it says money red which is awesome so now this is our money now if we are going to change this to lead and apply the value modifications you will see that the money is set to 137 now let's check in the game whether it has been set to 137 yes it has and you can also see that in cheat engine because all these addresses actually point to that <coughs> now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to leave all these pointer scans in here because I want to make sure that next time I boot up the game this is still the same and that I don't lose all of the addresses or the pointer scans scan results. Um, so now what you do is you right click this and now let's say we want to find out our salt, okay? Now this is now the interesting part because we're going to right click this and we're going to go to... No, you don't have to do this. You can do this pretty much the same method with the pointer scan. You can do that for every value you want to have, okay? But this is a cool method to find certain things. Um, so go to browse this memory region and then it's going to open up the memory region. You can basically see what it does here. It says integer 3 as well. Um, well, this this interesting stuff. If you know about assembly code and all this, then you can basically see what's happening. <coughs> well, we're not going to do too much about this. We're going to go to tools. Wait, what? We're going to go to tools. Dissect data structures. Go to structures. Define new structure. Call this unnamed structure. Do yes. And click OK. 
And now we can see that up here there's our money, okay? And now we can see a bunch of other values. Now what these mean, this is probably and this is basically what I meant. If you know a thing or two about program, then we have this class right here, which is probably the player class. Which is most likely the player class. And then you have all these different values that are attached to the player class, and you can see all of them. Now, let's actually try uh, to find the salt, okay? What we do is resume the game, and we will look to the right, okay? Now I'm going to shoot the salt. Okay, did you see one value change? Now you can see a lot of values change when I move and all this, okay? But when I do the salt, one value in particular changes. Now it's 53, okay? This is just the value right below our money. Look at that, 37, okay? So now we know what our salt is. Now to verify that, we just double click on this value, and now we can set it to something like 150. <coughs> and now what we can do, you can see now the value doesn't update automatically, so we just got to shoot it once more. And as you can see, our value is back to where it was, okay? So basically, it's full now. So we know that this is the salt. Now, you're going to ask, okay, how do we get to this value, and how do we tell our compiler that this is the value you want to have? What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste one of these addresses with the offsets, okay? And this is where we're going to where we're going to start off. Um, so we're going to right-click this. Or you know what? You just can you can do control copy and then control V and then this is gonna pop up. You just click paste, okay? Don't even change anything like that. Now the bottom one right here is the one that we've just pasted, okay? Just take this. Let's let's verify because of the fifty C seventy s seven hundred seventy. Yeah, those are the same offsets, okay? Make sure that these have the same offsets. Now what we have pretty much, these offsets basically add you have a base address and these add up to the base address. Now, if we take a look at at the memory region we browse, then we can see that this is zero zero right here. It says offset description, right, and it says zero zero zero, and then it says zero zero four, which means that these are the bytes. Okay, so we have four bytes from that. And what we basically do is we do a hexadecimal calculation. So what you do is you just open up the calculator right here, and now what you want to do is we want to paste. We want to add this offset, which we have, so um, the, the, the last offset we have for this one, which is 50C, and we basically want to have the, pr the address that is right before that. So we just do 50C minus 4, okay? So 50C, just pasted 50, oh, okay. Yeah, well, this is one thing I have to show you as well. Go to View and go to Programmer to have hexadecimal. This is now, at the moment, this is decimal. Now you can go to Hex, and you can see what... Basically, 50 in decimal would be in hex, so it's 32 in hex, but it doesn't really matter too much. And now what you want to do is you want to paste in the 50C right here, and you want to do minus um, 4. And this equals to 508, okay? So this is our value now, 508, so we just copy this. And now we can change this offset right here to 508. And if that worked, then it might point to the right value. Okay, it did not work. Okay, that's very unfortunate. Um, so I think we just have to add 4. So let's try adding f 4 to 50C. Let's try that. So 50C plus 4 equals to 510. Let's try that instead. 510, I hope this works. Yes, here we go. As you can see, 134. Exactly. So we have to add this and if the address is, yeah, of course, well, I messed that up, I'm sorry, guys, but if this ad address is above our money, then we have to do, when then we have to subtract that offset value. Now, as you can see, I can't go any higher than that, okay? So, if you want to do that, then what you simply do is you copy this address that you have up here in group 1, go to the calculator, make sure that everything here is deleted, just paste this in, and just do, okay, and now, this is the thing, um, what you have, basically, you can see 0, 0, 0, and what you want to do is, the last thing you see right here is 98. And you basically want to scroll this entire page. So what you do is just this address minus 98, and then you will have this one as the last address, and then the rest that's above it. Okay, so just do minus 98. And then we have this address to copy this and paste this in here. And now you can see that 137 is just at the bottom, and right here we've scrolled up a little bit, so to see other values. And then you can basically see a bunch of different values, 
and you can find out a lot of these values. You can jump and go into the game, change certain things and see what changes and then you can basically have all these different addresses. So what we're going to do now is we have this one right here. Let me add some information about this. This is the salt we have. Okay. So what you do now is very simple indeed. Um, we're just going to go to the dynamic game manager. Uh, game trainer, game manager. That's interesting. Um, go to file, import, and import our infinite.cds file. We have this one address. Now what we do is we're going to call this salt. The module is bioshockinfinite.exe. Again, the base address is the same we had before, which is this one. Okay, just copy that. Use 0x. And then we need the uh, the offsets again. That's, that's a little annoying. I should have... Yeah, maybe I should have done it a little differently. Okay, let's just hurry up with this. 3a8. Uh, I'm just going to write it. F4, um, 0x, 1a4, 0x, 770, and 0x, 510. And those are the offsets for the salt. Okay, now we change this to an integer 32. It's 4 bytes. Again, then you go to add address, go to file, export. Or what you can do, like if you ac accidentally close this, don't worry. It says, okay, do you want to export it? Yes, we just got to do that. Go to infinite. Yes, replace it. Okay. We are good now. Now what we can do, we can... I don't know if reloading the voice will do anything. No, it won't. That's a little bit of a problem with it. Um, so just load the addresses again. So it updates the value fields. I hope it does that. Okay, that's probably another bug. Yes, as I said, a dev preview. So let's just, you know, reboot the application. Uh, and go to file, load addresses. Yes. Now... Let's do that, infinite.cds. Ah, oh, god damn it, I forgot the process name. I'm so sorry, guys. This should be a lot quicker. Hmm. File, load address. Of course, you can use these shortcuts. I could just hit Control and L. But now you can see we have our salt right here. Okay, so now if we change it to 150. Or actually, because we know it was 134 and we only used our salt once, we know that it depletes 16 of our salt. So we can just add. Hmm. 66, 166, and this should actually fill the bar up once we use it. Yes, as you can see, our bar is now completely filled, as you can see. So what we're going to do now, let's just close this, let's minimize this, let's minimize this, go to the dynamic game manager, and this is one of the features that are not in the program yet. Um, just right-click this, and you can freeze this value, which means that in theory, you will be able to do this. You can... This won't deplete, ever. As you can see, it's very fast, so it doesn't really change the performance of the game or anything. Of course, I'm recording, that's why the frame rate is probably a little bit fucked up, okay? But you can constantly do this, you can even charge it up, and it's still going to be the exact same value. As you can see, it's going to be reset. And all of this works perfectly. And you can do this for any value. So if you find out the ammo, we can do the exact same thing. Although it works a little bit weird. It's a little weird in Bioshock because they have sort of a mechanism to prevent that. But it doesn't work. So you still have unlimited ammo. You just deplete all of your other ammo that you have. But yeah. So, right. This is how to use my program. And uh, stay tuned for more updates. Um, and these updates will be automatic. So you will be prompted to update the application once an update is available and then you don't you just sit there and you know get the update and that's it you don't have to do anything. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Um this was my tutorial for my dynamic game trainer. Um if you feel really generous then you can donate to this project or pretty much to the company just to help us work on more things or to help me work on more things and keep this YouTube channel running and all that. But yeah guys, thank you very much for watching and I see you in another video.